The United States is a country not exactly known for its volcanoes. Since its founding, there have only been three to show any signs of activity in the lower 48 states. Still, there have been a good handful of eruptions, with one in particular standing out among the rest. This is the story of the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, the largest in all of United States history. Within the northwestern United States lies a massive mountain range, which contains some of the most dangerous volcanoes on the continent. The Cascade Mountain Range, often just called the Cascades, is one of the major mountain ranges present in Western America. It stretches from British Columbia, Canada, all the way down through Washington and Oregon into the northernmost tip of California. It includes both volcanic and non-volcanic mountains, with those being separated into different categories. The Cascade Mountains are a part of what's known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, a region around much of the Pacific Ocean where many volcanic eruptions and earthquakes occur. In fact, the four largest eruptions on Earth in the last 11,000 plus years have all occurred in this ring. In the United States, though, there is one eruption that takes the cake. Mount St. Helens. It occurred back in May of 1980 in Skamania County, Washington, and remains the largest that the country has ever seen. That should come as no surprise that before a volcano erupts, it puts out all sorts of early warning signs, with the most prominent of these being earthquakes. Mount St. Helens was not monitored until 1972, which is when seismometers were installed near the volcano in an effort to understand and predict eruptions. From January of 1975 until early 1980, there were not many earthquakes recorded. In fact, during that time period, there were only 44 earthquakes that registered on the seismologist's scales. Now that might sound like a lot, until you hear that between March 15th and March 21st of 1980, over 100 earthquakes were recorded. The most prominent of these was recorded on March 20th, when a magnitude 4.2 earthquake alerted scientists that Mount St. Helens might be preparing to erupt for the first time since 1857. Following that earthquake, the scientists working around the mountain decided to deploy additional seismometers in order to keep closer track of what earthquakes were occurring and exactly where they were happening. The seismic activity was beginning to pose a significant threat, not necessarily because of the damage itself, but because it was triggering large avalanches that snowballed down the mountain. This heightened activity led scientists to believe that an eruption was coming, and on March 27th, their suspicions were confirmed. A series of phreatic eruptions, which occur when water underground is superheated into steam by magma, were recorded, which effectively meant that a major eruption was all but guaranteed. On May 18th of 1980, everything finally came to a head. Of the 10,000 earthquakes that had occurred up until this point, at 8.32 a.m. on May 18th, the strongest one hit, a magnitude 5.1. This caused the entire bulging north face to break off and slide away. This landslide still remains as the largest in recorded history. This resulted in a rapid depressurization within the volcano and the eruption that scientists feared. A sudden burst of lava and rock shot out of the volcano 200 meters into the sky and down the side of the mountain that had just collapsed. As the volcano erupted, snow, ice, and even several entire glaciers were melted along the side of it, which just exacerbated the landslide problem. The water mixed in with dirt and debris, causing lahars to reach 50 miles to the southwest of the volcano. Several less severe outbursts continued into the next day, but this single eruption is the one that caused a majority of the damage. The total thermal energy released during the blast was in excess of 24 megatons of TNT. That is equivalent to 1,600 times the energy released by the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The ash column emerging from the mountain rose up and up into the sky, to a height of 12 miles. 
This spread out into a mushroom cloud over the span of 10 minutes, and then remained spreading tephra, or volcanic debris, for 10 straight hours. The direct blast zone, or the innermost area affected by the eruption, was 8 miles in radius. Within this space, practically everything was destroyed, either by the lava or by the landslide retreating down the mountain. The channelized blast zone, extending to 19 miles in radius, was an area in which everything was flattened, or only protected in certain spots by topography. The seared zone, which is harder to measure but generally accepted to be within 28 to 35 miles, is the area where trees are still standing but seared brown by the fire and gas. By the time the pyroclastic flow hit its first human victims, it was still 680 degrees Fahrenheit, or 360 degrees Celsius. The magma wasn't really the dangerous part, though. The noxious fumes that it exerted were. Of the 57 known to have died during the eruption, most perished due to asphyxiation. Only a couple of people succumbed to their burns. In total, the volcano released 540 million tons of ash, which coated the ground in an area of 22,000 square miles. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was massive and deadly, resulting in, as aforementioned, 57 deaths. It also resulted in $1 billion of damage, or approximately $3.6 billion in today's dollars. Thousands upon thousands of animals were killed by the pyroclastic flows and overall fallout, and the crater on the volcano is still clearly visible to this day. Many highways were closed due to poor visibility from the ash, and many roads had to be left closed for months as sections of them were restored from the damage that occurred in the blast. Fine ash caused short circuits in electric transformers, resulting in lost electricity for nearby buildings. Air travel was disrupted for several weeks, thousands of flights were cancelled, and the ash covering the ground still needed to be removed. At the time of the eruption, the summit was owned by the Burlington National Railroad. In light of everything that happened, the land was donated to the United States Forest Service, who were in charge of the cleanup, observation, and assistance needed. Later, that area would be preserved as the Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument, where those who had died are immortalized, and where the Forest Service is currently letting nature take back over. It is slowly but surely building a foothold in the wake of this catastrophic event. As of today, Mount St. Helens seems to have calmed back down. That doesn't mean, however, that it's done. It had a brief period of activity between 2004 and 2008, when new lava domes began forming near the summit. Fortunately, steam was able to escape through them. Since then, new lava hasn't been observed emerging from the volcano. Now, This volcanic eruption didn't result in a great many deaths, and the reason is that volcanoes have shaped civilization next to it for thousands of years. These mountains have always been unsafe to build so close to. And because of that, the damage was much lower than it would have been in, say, a more urban location. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was a historic event for the world, and one that will likely never be forgotten, especially for the western United States. Most of the damage caused by the eruption is still apparent to this day, and so many lives were affected by this catastrophe. To see another video of ours just like this one, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that said, thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next time.